apply for every job that we have on the website. <laughs> <laughs> that, and that's, we, we see that, in our, our, we have two talent acquisition people essentially that look at all of the job openings for, for uh, BioRemington and BioRemington Montreal. And they'll, they'll show me a list that this person's applied for a programming job, a writing job, a QA job, a marketing job, and you're thinking, well, pick one. <laughs> if, you're, if you're that great at all of them, we'll hire you. But, but uh, pick that one and, and have that focus with it. Um, the other big misconception for us is, uh, and, and the director of QA wanted me to mention this one, QA is not just a stepping stone in, into the industry here. Um, there, there's a misconception that get your foot in in, in quality assurance and then you can, you know, the world's your oyster as far as where you want to go after that once you're in the company. Um, the department is a, a very serious, a very career-oriented uh, department as well, and it's not just the second stone to get into the industry. Um, we do hire people that, or we do uh, internal promotions sometimes from people within the QA department, but it's no higher a percentage than uh, taking people from other departments as well. So uh, the, the QA isn't the, the fail-safe to get you into the, the video game industry. That's my two tips. I'm just curious, actually, to make the audience. I mean, I'm assuming that, that everyone here has an interest in getting a game in video, uh, job in video games. Is that is that correct? I mean, yeah. by show of hands, who's interested in art? Art specifically. Okay, design, programming, QA. Okay, how about the other things that go into making a company run? Which is something human resources, the uh, sysadmin, the wow. people that build computers, uh, administration, finance, all that sort of thing. Yeah, sorry, I forgot about the list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that's kind of, that's a common misconception. Everybody thinks, oh, you know, Bioware, you're going to have to be a programmer or a writer or an artist. There's so much more that goes into making a video game. Audio. What about audio? Everybody oh, yeah, audio. audio. Yeah. I think audio is one of those that, that that's become so much more important. It kind of had a lot. Uh, when, I, when I first got into games in the, in the late 80s, audio was hugely important because you couldn't sample, you couldn't use works from composers on disc. He had to program using the, the chips that were in the machines, you know, the SID chip and the C64, and he got some fantastic uh, music out of that. And I think it's a wonderful, um, uh, it's, it's very symbolic of the industry as it's evolved in the, the uh, you like, I like to think of uh, developing in computer games as it's, it's, it, 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 it involves embracing change. Change is that if you embrace change and you enjoy change, then you'll enjoy working in video games because the, uh, the paradigm shifts on a, basically a five-year basis when the hardware is updated. And if you can't essentially unlearn what you've learned every five years, you will not thrive and you will not continue to, to progress. Uh, and audio was wonderful in that we got to a point where the machines themselves became so sophisticated that you could take you know, huge chunks of sampled sound and put them into the game as a, as a soundtrack. Um, and then people started going towards licensed composers and all these great artists and uh, music style. I did a game called Wipeout many years ago when uh, and it was one of the first ones to have a, a, a release soundtrack and it was by acts like Orbital and all these kind of guys. And then and the audio department kind of got pushed to one side because it was no longer relevant to have in-house composers working on your machines anymore because you didn't need to. But that's come full circle. Uh, and now we're seeing the rise of composers like Richard Jacks and guys like that who, you know, are basically they, they have made their name through composing for a new medium, and the new medium is games. So, uh, uh, and it's the same with art. You know, it's, it's, it's working within parameters, it's not, it's, it's, it's a different medium, but the guys who have thrived and the guys who have become better and better at it are the ones who have taken their traditional creative skills and their creative eye and, de and developed it within the parameters of a new medium. Uh, and I just find that really exciting and, uh, and, and, if, and, and, it, and it still makes me passionate about the medium today. It's not necessarily the games, it's, it's the medium itself. And if that's what excites you, that's why games will be a, a, a really good, a really good career opportunity for you, because it's only going to get bigger.